Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. FSC takes over management of SSL. More concerns about Portmore becoming Jamaica's 15th parish. And later in sports, schoolboys stand out invited to reggae boys training. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pula and here are the details. We begin this afternoon with the latest from the Stocks and Security Li Securities Limited SSL saga. The Financial Services Commission FSC has assumed temporary management of the SSL. In a release a short while ago, the FSC announced the appointment of Kenneth Tomlinson of Business Recovery Services Limited as the temporary manager. This FSC says is... This steps follows the appointment of Mr. Tomlinson as special auditor, effective January 13, and further supports its enhanced supervisory oversight of SSL. Meanwhile, concerns has been raised about the FSC's oversight of SSL prior to this latest saga. O'Shane Masters has the details. The regulatory body for non-deposit taking institutions, the Financial Services Commission, FSC, is facing a heavy backlash following the multi-million dollar fraud at investment firm Stocks and Securities Limited. Financial analyst Dennis Chung says, based on the fact that there were irregularities identified from as far back as 2010, a lot more questions need to be asked of the management of a company, past and present. He says for such a scheme to have been taking place for a decade, there must have been telltale signs. Mr. Chung is also adamant that the FSC must not be left unscathed in the matter. It is not just a matter of looking at static reports, but where is the trend analysis? You know, and, and, and I can speak as someone who is regulated also that I rely on, in many respects, that sort of trend analysis. Um, from the FSC as a regulator, people need to understand you can't just look at one report and say, oh, this report is fine. Look at everything. That's why it's so important to look at your balance sheet, your audit report, and all of those things, what the FSC is important. And you say, well, you know, I mean, this sort of supports this concern I have over here. Let me look a little further. And that is my concern. Why was there greater Scrutiny. But Director of Communication at the FSC, David Geddes, says it is restricted by law in how much it can disclose about an investigation. If, for instance, we had a situation where we recommend that an entity's license be suspended or revoked, that is not something that's going to be made public, I mean, until the process has been allowed to run its course. And if it is not, if the license is not suspended or revoked, you can't then go out, circumvent that process and just release the information why you wanted the license to be suspended or revoked. And again, I'm just speaking generally, but we must um, adhere to what um, obtains. We may wish for it to be different, but until that happens, we are a creature of statute. Mr. Chung agrees to an extent but believes more could still be done. I don't buy the argument, I mean, that, that the FSC could not have acted because of the legislation. I, I, I agree with David that they shouldn't comment publicly, but certainly, you know, um, action could have been taken in terms of, you know, audits and all of that um, internally being done by the FSC. But, you know, that's, that, that has gone and we need to look forward. I, I, I am predicting that I think that the FSC is going to step up their operations much more um, in, in, in um, the financial industry, and I, I would applaud that. Now, it has also been reported by the Gleaner that in 2016, the FSC had cited Stocks and Securities Limited for a culture of non-compliance and mismanagement for which it served notice of intention to suspend SSL's license. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, a developmental economist is predicting that several local financial institutions will be implementing added measures to closely monitor their internal control mechanisms and procedures to detect and prevent fraud. 
development economist Dr. Chris Stokes believes many people in leadership positions are vulnerable to fraud taking place under their watch by their subordinates and this is something they'll be seeking to fix immediately. He asserts that at the leadership level there may be some exposure to liability based on the conduct of employees. Dr. Stokes says he anticipates that financial institutions will be pulling out all the stops to fix any perceived deficiencies in their security measures and guidelines. At the same time, he's calling for regulatory changes at the Financial Services Commission. He argues that the commission needs more teeth to handle situations where dishonesty occurs at financial institutions. It should be. I'm not persuaded that there are glaring gaps that will be found. And the, the question is, you know, how do you combat attempted fraud on the inside? That is the that is the challenge from the inside. This is not somebody doing somebody or writing you doing something on the outside or writing you a, a, a bad check. I believe that in terms of their ability to impose um, fines, penalties on institutions and to require certain standards of internal controls that that ought to be sufficient. I don't I, I, I don't see a need to have any sweeping laws right now. Um, but we'll see what the nature of 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 um, these frauds have been and where the gaps are that may have permitted them. You know, I think that is a, that is a first step. More concerns over the proposal of Portmore becoming Jamaica's 15th parish. Portmore Council for the Westchester Division, Rainier Benjamin, says the proposed boundary is not practical as it reduces the size of the municipality. O'Shane Masters has more. The proposed Counties and Parishes Amendment Bill 2022, when enacted, will provide the legal framework for Portmore becoming the 15th parish. It will include provisions that will remove direct mayoral elections as well as alter the boundary of Portmore. But Councillor for the Westchester Division, Rainier Benjamin, says the municipality's border should be expanding and not shrinking as being proposed. When you look at where they left off, a lot of that industrial belt and the lakes belt, which we think one other commercial entities have been expanding and taking into consideration. You realize that this boundary is politically motivated. And to me, this is foolishness. Because you can't just in a piecemeal way say you want to create a parish. But the boundary is not even logical. Because when you use a toll road as a boundary, that exit coming out of Portmore, that little stretch from the underpass of Highway 2000, coming out to Mandela Highway, will be in another parish. That doesn't argue well for good planning and maintenance and everything. He contends that the boundary suggested in 2015 should be used. Taking the Rio Cobra, which is a natural landform, which most of the times, most other parishes, their boundaries are set by natural landmarks, such as rivers and other um, geographical marks. Another councillor has suggested that the Bernard Lodge lands, which will be included in Portmore, under the new proposal be used for commercial lots rather than residential lots. This, he says, will bring in revenue. But Portmore's Mayor Leon Thomas had this response. The government sold a portion of these land for housing development. Already? Already. already. So it's not right? So no, hold on, councillor. Hold on. So it's not we in Portmore proposing to build more houses is the government sell the land to build these houses. He further noted that with those new housing units and the proposed reduction of the boundary, things will only get worse for Portmore. The councillors were contributing to the debate on the Portmore boundary at a recent meeting of the Municipal Corporation. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Renewed calls for Westmoreland residents to take the COVID-19 vaccine. The issue was raised at the recent Municipal Corporation meeting. More in this report. Less than 25% of the Westmoreland population is vaccinated against COVID-19. That's according to Medical Office of Health for Westmoreland, Dr. Marcia Graham. Dr. Graham says the take-up rate has worsened between the ending of last year into this year. Right now in Parish, we have... 
four active cases of COVID-19. Two persons are in hospital, and both of them are unvaccinated, and two persons are being managed at home. We have another seven cases that are suspected. The numbers are low, but the positivity rate is going up. Dr. Graham is also appealing to residents to get their booster shots if they have gotten the vaccine. Booster shots are being offered and it's the same vaccine that we use to give the primary series that's been used for the boosters. And just to say that we have had some persons who have taken the booster shot for 2022, 20, we had um, we have had 2,088 persons that have taken the booster shot so far, so there is room for much improvement there, but it is being offered. She says even if the borders should close due to a new variant, people in Jamaica are still at risk. Let me just encourage us as fellow citizens, as people of Westmoreland and beyond, to observe the protocols and stay safe. We want to embrace health and wellness for our country. We want to stay safe. We want to stay COVID free for 2023. And so I want to encourage you that as we have by the grace of God, went through a very challenging, turbulent 2022, we know that we trust him to see us to whatever difficulties lie ahead for 2023. Meanwhile, Dr. Graham says the parish doesn't have any recorded cases of monkeypox. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck is reporting a reduction in the backlog of cases in the pa parish courts. According to, the, according to Mr. Chuck, the parish courts are now seeing a 25% reduction. We can also say that over 90% of the cases that are actually tried in the lower courts are tried within 12 months, which is a significant achievement. We do admit that there may be 1% of cases that still go beyond 24 months. And I know the Chief Justice's aim is to ensure that shortly that backlog, instead of being measured at 24 months, will be reduced to 15 months. He is, however, concerned about the backlog of cases in the High Court, but remains optimistic that it will be addressed too. We're, unfortunately, cases are drag dragging on for too long. But we hope that that will soon be addressed. And I can say, to the credit of our Chief Justice, who for the last number of years have used statistics to be able to measure how well or how badly we're doing. So there's a statistical department at the court system, sponsored by the Ministry of Justice, to measure how well we're doing. It's now time for the Business Minute. The University of the Commonwealth Caribbean is partnering with Anti-Money Laundering and Financial Crimes Institute to offer a certificate in anti-money laundering and financial crimes prevention. Under the agreement, the university will also be able to offer programs on countering the financing of terrorism and financial crime prevention. The courses will also be available in the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas, Bermuda and the Cayman Islands. In business overseas, China has recorded its first population decline in 60 years. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the population shrank in 2022 to 1.411 billion, down from 850,000 people from the previous year. This is a new milestone in the country's deepening demographic crisis with significant implications for its slowing economy. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And now for the top regional and international stories. 
In the region, Canada has imposed sanctions on two Haitian elites in response to acts of significant corruption that are fueling the political and economic crisis in the country. The sanctions implied a ban on dealings, effectively freezing any assets held in Canada. Officials say they have reason to believe these individuals are using their status as high-profile elites in Haiti to protect and enable armed criminal gang illegal activities including drug trafficking and other acts of corruption. On the international scene, Southwest Airlines has updated its customers following its operations meltdown last month. This comes after the airline cancelled over 1,600 flights in the last few months. The airline sent customers an email outlining its recovery from the mountain of issues encountered during the peak holiday travel. Officials say the airline has also hired an aviation consulting firm to complete an event assessment and recommend additional mitigation methods. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jordan Ford.